Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Apollyon back with Diablo Immortal. I hope you're all doing good, having a great day. Today we have a video guide here for all six in-game classes for you guys. We will be talking about all these classes and we will be talking about the strength and the weaknesses for uh, all the classes so it gives you a better idea what class you want to pick when the game comes out and before we start some quick notes here for you guys all the information that i will be sharing here in this video is from immortal.maxroll.gg all the recommendation and the guys are written by them uh, it is actually written by rob the links will be in the description down below if you want to go and read the written version of the guide you can find it in the description down below they have a lot more information there as well and all the information that i will be sharing here will be uh, updated for the launch of the game so without any further ado let's go and start the guide so the first class that we have here is Barbarian which is a melee class. They have the ability to wipe out horde of enemies with their strong area of effects attacks uh, which makes them a really great choice for lambing and farming within the game. Barbarian is also a very aggressive class that is constantly getting up and close and personal to deliver some of the strongest uh, attacks arguably the king of melee combat and you are always at the heart of battle at most time whether you are fighting off spawn of enemies alone or leading your team into a battle and on the top of that Barbarian also has many different skills that have the crowd control effects allowing you to endlessly pin down the enemies and on the top of being a solo powerhouse the Barbarian harness some of the best group buffs in game once you find the correct legendary items with the uh, talents making them an essential part of any group activity within the game and as for some of the key strength points for barbarians barbarians are one of the fastest character in the game when using the right legendary item it gives you a insane movement speed and they can also give that movement speed to their teammates as well and on the top of being insanely fast they are also very strong and can rip through any content the game has to offer and being able to deal massive area of attack damage as well as the ability to put out huge damage number on your screen making them one of the most formidable characters for PvE content and PvP content alike. If all this was not enough the barbarian gives all teammates 25 percent increased damage as well while using the white legendary items making them an excellent choice for any group activity and as for some of the weaknesses for barbarian or great things have some downside to them and for barbarian it is very simple monster and opponents in pvp can hit you uh, really really hard in close range you need to get close to them to do what the barbarian is good at and with this comes some great risk in close range combat when the content gets harder as you climb the ranks of challenge rifts you will feel a constant need to focus on your defenses the barbarian can also be very dependent on its ability to bust down enemy quickly especially in pvp because sadly these high damage and high mobility skills have higher cooldown as well and the enemies can escape from you in fight and the barbarian can quickly run out of option to able to chase them or uh, reduce the gap between you and the enemies with the range characters and here you can see on your screen some of the weaknesses and strength for the barbarian
And next, we will be talking about another melee class within the game that is Crusader. And Crusader is always charging forward on their mount, leading you and your party with a really high area of effect damage with incredible speed and party-wide buffs for everyone in team. And as a Crusader, you will also quickly crush group of weak enemies as almost at every skill at your disposal with high area of effect based DPS. As for some of the strength key points for Crusaders, Crusaders are a melee and AoE based class with the fastest overall movement speed in game. Most Crusader builds rely on draw and quarter as their main skill to move around and deal damage. The primary attack given by Draw and Quarter when combined with legendary items enable Crusader to demolish waves of enemies. If damage become a problem, the Crusader has defensive skills such as Punish for improved block, chance or conjunction of light to make you and your party invulnerable for a short duration. In a party, Crusader can use Holy Banner, giving all nearby party members a 100% critical chance for a short duration. Crusader also fill a party role as a scout, dealing eerie damage to trash monsters, triggering events, and pulling enemies together. And in PvP, Crusader have an impressive kit of stuns, interrupts, and dashes such as Sacred Change, Shield Charges, or Fallen Sword. Overall, Crusader are a top tier choice for their high area of effect damage, incredible movement speed, impressive defensive skills, effective party wide buffs, and wide a variety of PvP skills. As for some of the weaknesses for Crusader, the Crusader Reliance on Drawn Quarter exposes some weaknesses of the class. This skill is vulnerable to stun and interrupts, causing you to immediately lose the entire duration. Most builds with Drawn Quarter rely on casting other skills before casting it, further decreasing your damage during stuns and interrupts for your entire build. Finally, using Drawing Quarter for movement means that when it's on cooldown, you have no option for escape since you are a melee class. Relying on it for escape can make it easy to become trapped and make it difficult to dodge range attacks when it's on cooldown. Crusader have poor single target damage and high cooldown duration skills. This leads to many situations where all of your skills are on cooldown, leaving you with only your primary skill as a result. Certain bosses can be difficult to kill in challenge rifts. Finally, as the scout for the party, you will be put in situations where you must push far ahead in order to advance a dungeon. This can mean giving up a portion of loot that drop on the ground. Since you are tasked with pushing forward, this can result in minor loss in salvaging material compared to the rest of your party. And here is some uh, strength and weaknesses you guys can see on your screen. Alright, next we have our final melee class here, the Monk, with the power of 1001 goals in her face, the Monk weaves attack together to destroy their foes, resulting in a fast, agile melee fighting style. They can engage in an escape from combat at lightning speed, group enemies and blow them up with an impressive area of effect abilities at their disposal. Meanwhile, their presence is always welcome in the group for their ability to shield and buff party members, making them survive better in difficult fights. The combat is action-packed and you will weave different skills together to create devastating combos while dashing around the battlefield to strike at the right 
targets. All this is done with the power of bare fist and sheer will a monk is able to muster. And as for some of the strength points for monk, monks are a melee damage class with the biggest arsenal of group support skills in game, but this does mean you have to play a dedicated support role in parties and dungeons with your teammates. You can carry your own weight in a group. Your support skills increase your visibility and add more exciting elements to the class. Even without going full support, you can give up a skill slot for skills like Shield of Zen or in a Sanctuary, especially with some legendary items and talents to protect and buff your teammates. Cyclone Strike is another amazing skill to group up a big pack of enemies that is even worth using in solo play. The overall mobility of Monk is high with Mystic Strike being an unparalleled tool to dash around in any direction, allowing you to control the battlefield. To go even faster, there are more options such as Flying Kick, Intervening Claw, Reaching a Reebok, and even your primary attack, Fist of the Thunder, that comes with extra utility. In PvP, you have the ability to quickly engage, card control your enemies, taking them by surprise with Imprisoned Fist while shielding your team from incoming attacks. All in all, the monk is well rounded class with a great toolkit and wearing play style in different type of content. As for some of the weaknesses, while the monk has a variety of skills available to them, most of them are situational, which leads to less variety in extra builds. Especially in solo content, there is a little variety because the DPS options are quite limited. While the Exploding Palm is a satisfying and powerful ability to use, is a standard pick that cannot be replaced. Similarly, it's difficult to give up on that great mobility given by Mystic Strike because it enables you to continue your combo across the better field. Monk main single target ability is Mystic Allies, a pet skill with a long cooldown that usually requires you to clean up most surrounding enemies before summoning them. If they get distracted, you can easily find yourself slowly chipping away at incredibly tanky bosses. Lastly, you are required to sequence your skill in the right order for them most effective use which both makes the class more difficult to play and vulnerable to interrupt especially in PvP. Luckily, most monk skills have short cooldown so you can get back into action quite quickly, even if you mess up your best combo. And as for some of the strength and weaknesses, you guys can see it on your screen. Alright, next we have our first range class, which is Wizards. They are pure spellcaster class, wielding elemental magic with high area of effect and card control to stop their enemies. This class is for strategic players that enjoy spell synergize combos, control over opponents, skill shots, and devastating damage. As for some strength points, wizards can be played with range spells to deal damage from afar or battle me star up close. Their iconic movement skill teleport is used to instantly reposition during combat or traverse long distance quickly. Black holes group up holes of enemies together so they can all be hit with the wizard arsenal of skills spells. Skill synergize increase the wizard capabilities. Hungering wing, arcane wing cast on the burning drone create a fire storm that does 50% more damage. In PvP, wizards are a flexible class with different play styles and skill options. Control build turn the ties of a better field for victory. They have an arsenal of CC skills that stun, freeze, and chill and knock back your enemies. Duration 
of eerie skills like meteor and arcane wind are used to zone opponents off objectives battle mage bills can be used to rack up the kill count if you prefer to get aggressive flaming orb and ice storm can be pre-casted before teleporting on your opponent with the rift dancer stride to deal insane boss damage your opponent won't even know what killed them as for some of the weaknesses wizard skills tend to have long cooldowns strategic use of these cooldowns is important especially for skills that benefit from being used together in combination this is an intelligent base class so you need to play accordingly wizard lake group buffs the only benefit they can give teammates is 10 percent damage from disintegrate the scroll of West Marsh class Kinzimibel is pretty worthless while other classes Kinzimibel provide buffs to teammates. As for in PvP, wizards are quite squishy and rely on hit and run tactics with teleport to survive. The majority of these spells are skill shots, require precise aim. Poor aim of execution resulting in a miss attack can easily get you killed. You need to react quickly and accurately in battle to be a great wizard. And now you guys will see some of the strengths and weaknesses on your screen. Alright, next we have our second range class that is Demon Hunter. The popular Demon Hunter class from Diablo 3 returns to Diablo Immortal with a devastating ranged toolkit. They can dish out insane damage to hordes of enemies while moving around the battlefield at a safe distance, making them great for left wing farming and the end game. They are the best class for a single target damage, making you an uh, invulnerable asset to any team as for some of the demon hunter strength they can move while shooting them on auto attack this allows them to constantly deal damage while positioning themselves out of harm's way the best part is multi shot can be fired while moving and auto attacking turning you into a death machine if this wasn't enough you can Activate Vengeance and Reign of the Vengeance with Sky Strider to become the highest single target damage dealer in the game. Since most trash mobs die easily in Diablo Immortal, building towards a single target build is almost always the way to go. In short, Demon Hunter excel in a PvP damage and dodging attacks from the bosses, making them a top choice for farming a group play. In PvP, Demon Hunters stay back and slay, choosing when to engage is their key to success as they don't have many tricks to survive. Once they are behind their tanks, which are Demon Hunter favorite line of defense, they can turn the battle ground in a sea of corpses. As for some of the Demon Hunter weaknesses, Demon Hunter lack crowd control annoying abilities and can't really engage or disengage in pvp the best skill in their arsenal is once again multi shot which has great range and spread but once that is down they are left with auto attacks and their wits it also doesn't help that they are one of the squishiest class in the game they need to do good positioning and quick decision making to win with the demon hunter and pvp making them known ideal for newcomers demon hunter also spot the worst movement speed in the game yes they can move while shooting but it comes at the reduced speed and finally other than the tracking kit which provide movement speed demon hunter can buff their teammates the closest thing is using spinning charcum with the slayer breaches which gives 20 percent additional damage after hitting five times Luckily, they are unbeatable damage, still gets them invited to the groups. And now you guys will see some of the strengths and weaknesses on your screen. Alright, now that we are at very end, 
we have one of the most anticipated class that people are looking to play that is Necromancer, Commander of the Dead, Master of the Bone and Blight, the Necromancer of Diablo Immortal. Control it all with strong area of effects and card control abilities as well as summon that bot soak and deal massive amount of damage. This class excel at nearly all roles. It's a powerful summons, make it far and away the best class for solo content. And while its strong support abilities provide great utility in group content, finally corpse provide a unique resource to Necromancer that is unavailable to any other class, offering a powerful and challenging resource to manage. As for some of the Necromancer's strength points, Necromancer have reliable options for support via bone armor, Single target damage via commander skeleton, airy damage via corpse explosion, and CC via bone wall. They also excel at surviving and keeping their allies and minion alive. The command golem ability taunt monster, forcing their attacks upon it for a time. Bone armor combined with Parting gift gives you and your party and your minion a buff with 5 charges that can absorb 5 attacks no matter how large the damage before the shield phase. This is a must have survival ability in any of the raid groups. In PvP Necromancer have many options as well, the strongest option by far being the Bone wall ability this combined with the excellent back bone gives you three charges of a bone pillar that first knocks back and then stun and then remain on the battlefield for several seconds slowing and potentially continuing damage via fire ally or enemies that dare to get close to it on the top of that, they have Bone Spikes, an ability with two charges that can stun all enemies within a 45 degree arc in front of you. As for some of the weaknesses, the Necromancer only option for mobility is Wrath Form and the best legendary effects for this ability clash with other great legendary options. As a result, the best build typically abandon Wrath Form in favor of higher DPS or support skills nearly all of the best ability for this class are short to mid range so you have to get up close and personal with your enemies while this does make you more squishy keep in mind that short range ability are usually balanced around a higher risk and reward and now you guys will see some of the strength and weaknesses on your screen and if you guys like this video make sure to subscribe like and leave a comment and i will see you guys in the next one